Momenteel regeert chaos in het land. Jappen zijn net weg, Engelsen zijn weer gevlogen. Doen in de Indonesiërs, zoals ze zichzelf al noemen, liggen met elkaar overhoop. Ze noemen hem de Turk. Ze zeggen dat hij niemand hoeft te rapporteren. Ik ben hier gekomen om mensen te helpen, net als de rest een beetje rondjes te lopen. Kun je door goed te doen de zondes van een ander vergeven krijgen? De manier om het te vernietigen is met nog meer terreur. Vraag je je nooit over wat we hier nou eigenlijk aan het doen zijn? Onze vader, die in de hemel is uit, geheiligd wordt in uw naam. En vergeef ons onze schulden, gelijk ook wij vergeven aan onze schuldenaren. Wat hier gebeurt, Daar heb ik me niet voor ingeschreven. Er zijn maar twee soorten mensen op aarde: jagers en prooien. En jij? First off, I think this is probably one of my all-time favorite war films because I think straight from, can you just talk about the, the characters, your character's arc? Was that one of the many reasons why you wanted to take part in the East? Because I haven't seen this kind of arc in, in many in many war films. It's a very realistic look at a person's journey. And I'm sure that yeah. really appealed to you. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely an arc that does, that you don't come across in, in, a, in a lot of scripts. Um and it was a big challenge as well to um to sort of go through all those phases and create a certain depth in 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 sense of um you know he has he has a certain ability to understand the situation everywhere he goes and he he has a he has a big empathy i think that's what um what what draw me to the character as well but like we you know us as viewers uh right now in this time of age we know he hasn't been given all the information so that's what makes it kind of uh tough to look at and sensitive to talk about right now uh still so yeah i mean that's uh, that's a, a hell of a nice job to do as an actor to to build such a such a big arc and without giving too much away regarding just where the story goes you know war and life is uncompromising. Do the uncompromising nature of the East also attract you regarding the story where things aren't sugar-coated? Obviously, you're talking about a historical point in time, but also, also a lot of times there is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's a very uncompromising look. And that's the way I think most war films should be. Is that how you feel as well? Yeah, but I, I, I do think these guys, or like the character of Johan, he did think that there was a pot of gold at the end. You know, that's why they went. That's why they that's why they signed themselves up as volunteers to go to war. After being in a world war for five years, they've gr they they grew up in a war. So they 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 signed the, themselves up because they thought they were going to be the the heroes. Uh, that's what 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 they had been told. So that's yeah, so that's what makes it so complicated. And that's um, that, yeah. I mean, there's there are so many so many different angles to look at the situation these guys are in a certain sense also uh the victims of the situation you know when you're portraying someone from another time how much for, especially for this role i'm sure it's different from when you were when you were young in winter and wartime but that also dealt with i'm sure tons of research but what now you as an adult what kind of research and journey did you, did you go on as far as just preparing for this character and does that early chapter in your life did, did that ever help you that that experience from long ago or is that just another time in your life as far as getting prepared for for this film definitely another time <laughs> i mean that was like back then when i was 14 i was just i just i just go away from school for three months it was like a holiday that was that was the way i looked at you know being a young actor uh and then um right now it, it's 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 a study you know like it's uh it's it's so cool to to be able to dive in so much material 
be able to find so much information about certain hidden piece of history, uh, piece of history that that not a lot of people here in Holland, although it's a Dutch piece of history, not a lot of people know about it. So uh, it felt it felt like I was, you know, I was in this sort of rabbit hole, uh, and and I was like finding out more and more and more, and I was reading. Uh, more and 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 seeing documentaries about it because when you when you do look for it there's a lot of information but it's it's not there like firsthand uh, and it should be definitely here in Holland it should be in our in our history books it should be in school it should be you know being taught to the kids and that's uh, that's definitely one of the goals I know the the makers and the director of this film have you know to Here's make it more like common um common knowledge yeah years ago i interviewed scott glenn and he had a minor role in apocalypse now and he talked about how he actually spent several months in the philippines even before they started shooting apocalypse now just traveling mm. to just another part of the world he actually lived with a tribe and actually got to soak in the atmosphere for you just can you just talk about getting out of your comfort zone as an actor which i assume is one of the many joys of what you do but just going to another part of the world and just the the physical maybe toll or emotional toll took you on you or maybe you actually on the flip side maybe it just really reinvigorated you as far as the way you look at your craft and the way you look at your work maybe both go hand in hand to be honest there wasn't there wasn't enough time and money for me to like go to indonesia before the shoot and and sort of um feel the energy of that country and um and you know everything the the smells the flavors the the temperature the the uh, everything so it was literally I, I was I was shooting another project so I was I, I flew into Indonesia and the next day we started shooting and after my after my last shot I had to go straight back to the airport and fly back home for another project as well so it was kind of uh, tight uh, but it did it did happen though along the way during during the shoot you know you just you're being sucked into this completely different world where everything is different and i mean we we work with like indonesian crew i think 80 percent of our crew was indonesian i think that really when you see the film you see that as well it really breathes that country you you sort of it's almost like you can smell indonesia when you look at the film it sounds like indonesia it looks like indonesia it, 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 and that's what makes me really proud when I look at the film as well. When I when I saw the film for the first time, that's what that's what most you know um, spoke to me. That like I really felt that it it breathes that country, um, which I think is really important as well. Where, for example, Apocalypse Now is set in Vietnam, but it's it's been shot in in the Philippines, and which is a really important factor for the for the director to really shoot this film in Indonesia as opposed to the Philippines, for example. This is a movie that's so diverse and complex, and I want want to know from you personally what was it like receiving? I'm sure just a wide array of rea reactions to the East. Are you just taking everything all in? Is it really cool for you to actually get all kinds of dialogue from high to low to complex? And what has that experience been like for you just to receive that dialogue, dialogue from the audience, the viewers? Yeah, really, um, really touching and overwhelming uh, because it, it has been, there's been so much reaction to, reaction to it. And it really um, says something about how, how sensitive it still is and how, how many people still have a certain bond with it one way or another and um yeah it's really it's really special i get so many different point of views so many different perspectives and sometimes i share them sometimes i i um i answer them sometimes i don't i'm, I'm also still like trying to figure out what my role as an actor is to you know take part in that sort of political historical discussion I mean, it's it's a definitely a big honor to be part of a project that that uh, hopefully helps people get over a certain situation or feeling that that is uh, stuck with them, if you know what I mean. So so that's um, that's definitely cool. But yeah, it's been overwhelming. So many re reactions. I found a couple of questions. You know, you you've been receiving a lot of acclaim for your body of work, and you know, I was re checking on YouTube and the, this kind of European star acclaim that you're getting. But uh, just for me, just as a cinephile watching your role in this movie, I was just thinking you're, the future for you looks bright. You really carry this film. 
all the praise that you get and the fact that you're considered up, up and coming and your future is bright, to you, does that feel good? Or is that ultimately just noise that you just have to ignore and just continue to do your work step by step moving forward? Um, a bit of both, I think. Um, it's definitely, uh, it's super exciting. I mean, um, I guess as an actor, you really hope you, you, you get the chance to, to play a part in a film one day that a lot of people get to see and, and, and you might impress people with. On the other, on the other hand, it, I mean, I don't have a certain goal set for myself, so it's not, it's not like I'm disappointed when uh, nothing happens um, on an international level or something. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way everything goes right now. So, but, but yeah, I mean, let's see, let's see what the future brings. It's, yeah. it's a, I mean, it's really cool that, that that the film is now being shown in in um, in Indonesia, but in the USA as well. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm excited. My final question is, you know, I, this is a ridiculous question, but I got to ask you just right off the top of your head. Can you name one of your all time as a cinephile yourself, one of your all time favorite movies? And, you know, what is it about the specific movie that still resonates with you today? Not just on a nostalgic level. This is all uh, this is always the, the, the time that you, you can not come up with titles, right? <laughs> right. Oh, oh uh, I can help you. Maybe if you, who's, I can edit it. <laughs> um, Man, I really gotta look this up now. Wow. Who, who's in it? Maybe I, I know who it, what what movie it is. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, Full Metal Jacket. I was I, just to go along with the line of your your films. I mean, that's 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 definitely a classic that we have watched um, for this film as well. Yeah. Did you know that that film has been uh, shot in London and London only? That they they didn't uh, step foot outside of England for that film. <laughs> No idea. You don't feel it when you watch it. You feel it no. like you're there. It's yeah. like it's been fully shot in London. It's yeah. crazy. But I'm I I want to say we still have time. I think we still have one minute. I mean, it's the dude, of course. Oh, the Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. There you go. Yeah. And very quickly, what is it about that film that that you love? I guess the comedy because or just I I just think that film has everything that a film. Uh, needs is I mean it's completely on the on the other side of the spectrum of films that are important in the in the sense of you know historical um, uh, importance or whatever but it's just it's so amusing and it's so good and the acting is so well and it, the you know I love the black humor yeah that's that's a that's definitely nostalgia for me and last thing before I I'm gonna do an intro to this video can you uh, pronounce your name so I don't butcher it when I do the intro introduction to this video. I will. It's Martijn Lakemeyer. Martijn Lakemeyer. Good luck okay. with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, for your time. And I apologize for me being late.